Hello everyone, welcome back to PG Chain Design Channel. This channel is about sharing Rhino 3D knowledge to students and 3D model professionals learning various Rhino 3D technique. Today we would like to talk about is making this pendant that has some design on the side. I would like to talk about where you can get an idea for the design and also how do you build this model. Are you ready? Let's get started. Before we get starting our model, uh, this is a wonderful website I would like to share with you. It's called Staller.com. It is a wholesaler website that you have to have a wholesale license in order to purchase from them. However, um, there's a lot of uh, good information on this website. They are the largest uh, wholesaler in the United States. So if you go into their product, they have all different product that you can take a look on it. Especially if you look at the ring, let's take a look on the ring. Um, the good things that I like is the image is really, really big. And then they also, most of the image, they will give you a top front side view. So if you go into anything that you like, and you can click on any of them and you can quickly to see they have the uh, three quarter view and the front view already. So that help you to understand what are they look like uh, in certain type of a design, especially when you have certain type of a twist. Sometimes it's hard to know what the side view look like. So this is a really good reference website for you, even though you may not have a license from them uh, yet, but um, you will love the website. So what I'd like you to do is go into the website and type it the uh, full prompt pendant design. And uh, you will come up all those full prompt pendant design. But the one I would like you to take a look on it is something like a little bit filigree style. And then a good thing is when you go in, you can kind of enlarge it. So if you want to do get a detail, you can see all those really big image there. Okay. So there's a, a lot of a design you can kind of explore it um, with them like this kind of scroll type of a design and also give you a good idea what is the thickness possible will look like a lot of my subscriber you guys are just starting with a jewelry design and a lot of things um, about the casting about the thickness about what is the end product should look like this will be an excellent website for you to explore okay so let's go back to our rhino and let's take a look on what we're going to do today i'm going to um maybe make it into the darker color so easier for you to see. All right, so we are going to do a full prong design. Uh, one thing that I would like to mention right here, this is the prong on the uh, 12 o'clock, six o'clock and three and nine. And this is a range for the pendant. A lot of time if you are doing a ring, which is that the ring shank is gonna go with the nine o'clock to three o'clock, your prong probably need to move it like 45 degree. What I mean is the prong won't orient it like this way and it will most likely be oriented like 45 degree, almost like this way. Okay, so this is look nicer on the ring because the prong is not gonna hit something else. And that's very small detail, but uh, if you are in the jewelry design, you probably need to know this. So let's go back to our topic today to make this uh, pendant. All right, so for this pendant, uh, we are not gonna making the chain. You can take a look on my other video that actually show you how to make chain and how to you know make chain for the rendering. So I'm going to delete this guy right here and um, we'll make this later. So I'm going to hide this one as well. Let's just take a look on this. If you look at this uh, before you actually start building all the part, we have to look at ov uh, overall. You can see that this is, if there's no pattern at all, it could be a cup looking things. So what we like to do is we will build the cup, just the shape of it, and we will actually make a UV curve. And from there, we'll do the design from there. Let's start with a stone for any of the desired uh, size you wanted. So let's go to the top view 
at the top view, I'm going to draw a circle. The first circle will be slightly smaller. This is where the bottom circle will be. The second circle will be almost the same size of our stone. Okay, and then I'm looking at here, uh, my perspective, you see two circles. I'm going to move the first circle down. And we want to move it lower than the culet because which is the tip of the uh, stone on the bottom because we want to make sure that any things that we are working on after we set the stone, the culet, which is this point right here on my right view, it won't stick it out. So it won't scratch any of your skin. Okay, so I'm going to make this slightly smaller and then I'm going to creating a curve. It's going to snapping from this point to this point. To creating the surface, I'm going to go to the surface. You have sweep two and you go to rail one, rail two and cross section. You can make them puffier or almost straight. Um, it's really personal preference. Okay, so with this, we are going to create a UV curve. You can go to curve, curve from the object and then you have create UV curve. Then that's uh, snapping on the surface and hit enter. Then you will come up this uh, box right here. This box means if that surface is completely flattened out, this is the area it's going to be. Okay, so I need to have full prong and notice that um, the seam is on the uh, 12 o'clock corner, so which means um, Right here on the left side, this is will be the seam. So left to the right, those will be the seam over there. Okay. So I would like to do is to uh, breaking this full curve into like full small curve. And then on the top and the bottom, I'm going to be typing divided. And I want to divide it into four sections. So that's also tell me where the prong location will be. So easily I'm going to put a curve from the point to point. So that helped me to divide this uh, curve into four equal section. And then so that's where the prong is going to be. And then we want to design within this area. Okay, so let's take a look on what the prong will look like. With this, it's about seven millimeter. I would like to set my prong. It's about 1.2 millimeter. So I'm going to my uh, rectangular. And actually, I like to use a conic corner. And I have explained this in other video. If you're interested in why do I like it, you can check on those video. So let's go to the front view. And then I'm going to type it 1.2. That's for the length and the other length is go also going to be 1.2 and then just kind of moving uh, with my mouse to see what is the shape look like. Okay, so this is where the area is going to have a prong and I'm going to just have this one and then copy another one up here. And the reason I want to get it longer is because I need to have a prong longer so my jeweler can able to set it. Then I will have the command is called loft and I just go from here to there. Hit enter. So then you have the prong and let's go ahead and cap it. So now it is solid. Okay, so we have one there. All we need to do now is making a bunch of a copy and I want to snapping into the uh, endpoint. Let's go take a look on the perspective and snapping to the endpoint of each of them so we know that we are designed within this area. Okay, so now let's go to the top and let's do our design. So our first design it's going to be um, some sort of a shape. Uh, I would like to actually put the one in the middle. So what I like to do is I'm going to go to the perspective view and then um, using the split comment and pick up this one. And then we want to split with this point, this point and this point. So we kind of split 
uh, them into four equal sections. So that way we can snipping into the middle. Okay, those, let's go back to the top view. And then we can do our design right here. So the first one I can snap in into the middle. And I kind of need to know like how high they are going to be. The line right here on the top, if you look back to our original one, is almost just a little bit under the girdle, right? So I don't want my design over or reach the girdle. Actually, I want to be just a little bit lower than the girdle. So I think that it's a good position right there. From there, I'm going to use uh, my curve and snapping into the endpoint and kind of design some sort of uh, leaf looking things, something like this, okay? And I'm going to mirror that to the other side. All right, so that's my first leaf. And it's really up to you how you like them. Um, I, I actually like them a little bit fat, uh, so that will come up the better casting quality. And I'm going to use my uh, ellipse tool on the second one with the diameter. And I'm going snapping into the quadrant to quadrant. And you want to go into the um, front view to do it. Um, kind of using the prong to give me a good idea of how thick they should look like. All right. So now this is my um, uh, one of the profile. I'm going to uh, make another profile with the same command going from here to here. And again, we want to go to the front view and we want to go something it's a little bit thinner to start with. Okay. So now what we can do a uh, sweep two. You're going to go to the surface and then you go to sweep to rail. Rail one, rail two, you're gonna go from here to here. Now, very important things is you need to go to the, this point by clicking the point on the top. I'm going to show you what happened if you don't do it. It will just give you half of it, right? And then you probably need to do one more time here, here, and go from here to the point. And it looked like there's not much different because you can just join this one back. But in fact, you got this is a two surface joined together. Now you have a poly surface. Um, what is the disadvantage is you cannot turn on the control point on the poly surface. So I want to turn it on. It will say the cannot turn on the point for poly surface. Okay. So I'm going to go back one step. Let's do it one more time. Sweep two. Rail one, rail two, going here to here, and then make sure do you click to the point, okay? And now you look at this no seam right in the middle, and what it does is if we need to do additional editing, and then we can turn on the control point that way we can turn it on. So this is really important step. A lot of people just you know don't think this is not much different, but it does make a huge difference. Okay, so we want to cap it. So now we have that first one. Okay, the the one on the side, I do like to do something more like this, drawing a curve roughly here, and I want to coming up a little bit and um, do a little bit more curve or something like this. All right, and then you can simply pipe it or you can use um, any of the profile that you wanted to do. I'm going to creating the profile and again use the um, conic corner and with the center. So let's take a look uh, snapping into the endpoint of this curve. And then we want to go to the front view and to holding the shift, kind of eyeball it like the size that you like. And then click on it so you have this curve right there. And let's go ahead and sweep it and see what does it look like. I'm going to use the sweep one rail. And you're gonna click on this profile, and then you have something like this. Okay. Um, the one that we have, it look like it is kind of um inside of the shape and I do like it to come up a little bit more. So I may want to have this one going a little bit and maybe want to increasing the thickness on this one. 
so that way you will come up a little bit more and I do not like you know the this, this showing like little piece showing on the, the um, right side of the sweep we just have so I, I may want to just make it a little bit skinnier okay and you can do any of the editing at this point uh, before you do anything make sure you cap this one so that way they look nicer and it's ready to bowling okay um, you can do any editing on this one for example uh, giving more of a dimension what you can do is to click on this one and I want to use the bend tool and kind of bending this one just come out a little bit like this so it giving a little bit more dimension on it okay and so we have that one make it slightly thicker um, and also you can take a render view to see how they look alright so you have something like this you can keep tweaking until you know the one you like I'm just gonna uh, save our time here um, to to finish this design I'm um, going to mirror make sure you're snapping into the midpoint now we have a lot of things to snap here um, and then so I have that over there okay and then I'm going to pick up all the surface and um, let's go ahead copy from the uh, midpoint of the curve and then we want to copy to all the midpoint right here midpoint there and midpoint there okay so now we have all the copy uh, one more things I would like to do is I'm gonna pick up all my uh, prong and then uh, make sure that they are tilted outside a little bit so that way you know it will spread it out instead of go straight uh, go straight while cutting into my stone too much before I actually flow it back I will also like to make a fillet edges on all the things on the top so I'm going to try 0.2 millimeter okay so they come out really good okay all right so now is the time to get it flow back to the top we need to creating a surface snapping into this endpoint to the endpoint and that gives us a good reference for where they are okay and let's go to the perspective before we flow it back we want to make sure we click on record history and then we want to go to the transform and you have the flow along the surface you want to pick up everything there and I'm going to try on um, one of the corner I say this corner and I'm gonna come back here and click on this corner all right so uh, one more things here I usually don't like the one on the seam because it may not be correct but this one look all right okay so we don't no longer need this surface and I want to call out my curve right there and and then we just need to pipe it or you can make another profile um, to fit the profile most of the profile you have we just need to have some sort of um, support underneath it next things we need to do is the bell the bell is quite simple I'm gonna creating um, an arc like this and then uh, close to where the middle I just gonna put a tag right there okay so this tag is going to help us to have better uh, curve it will flow better and I'm going to use the blend tool to blend from this point to that point okay so we have really smooth blend over there and let me trim uh, or split by the point where is the quadrant is right so let's delete the one on the bottom okay so now if I am going to move this out a little bit so easier for you to see what we like to do is we wanted to creating the profile so in this case I have this profile it's going to be somewhere like this a little bit thinner than the prong 
and then we are going to have another profile looking at the top view again starting from the center and this one I like to be a little bit thicker don't want to overpowering my pendant so we'll have something like this okay and let's go ahead to uh, do the radius first so um, let's fit it the all the corner this one I wanted to have 0.5 millimeter that's too big uh, let's say we wanted to do 0.3 millimeter and this one the radius is gonna be really small let's try 0.1 and see how you work it, it it looks all right okay so we're gonna use the sweep one rail going from here to here and then so we'll take a look and the oh that's a very good example here the reason it has almost like a twisting surface there is because the I did not move the arrow so sometimes you just cannot get lazy uh, thinking that will pass right now it's really honest Okay, so let's move all of them back to the midpoint at the same time. All right, so now you see it's much nicer. All right, so we have that one. All we need to do is to mirror to the other side. So let's go ahead to mirror this one back to here. All right, now if you go ahead wanted to bowling this because it has an intersection, you might encounter some problem. So my trick is going to be using the cap tool, cap command, and you're gonna cap this one and cap this one individually. So they both become solid. Then you wanna bowling join them, okay? So that way you won't creating the problem um, for the bowling and then we want to move it in a little bit make sure you have a good contact uh, that way you will have a good casting okay and also little things here this one I usually like to do and that's for jewelry design specific purpose I always like to move this one at least align with the bottom of my setting the reason is that way it will hang it correctly um, it will lay flat to your customer's chest okay so those are the little trick uh, about the jewelry design I hope you enjoy the video and please like and comment and share my video that's really important for me because that's the only way I can continue making free video for you Thank you for watching. I'll see you next Monday.